Hi, my name is Kara. I'm a CBT here at Dove Lewis, and this is Penny. And today we're going to troubleshoot um, Doppler. So a Doppler is something that we use to read blood pressure, um, but it can actually be pretty finicky, um, especially if you're just learning how to use it. So we're going to troubleshoot some of the common um, errors or issues that we have when trying to get a blood pressure using one of these. So the first thing um, a lot of people have trouble with is just not being able to find um, the pressure from the vessel at all. Um, so uh, that can be attributed to a lot of different things. First, um, we want to make sure that we're getting the proper cuff size as we're setting this up. Um, so you can take the pressure um, from any of the limbs. You can use the vessel on the underside or the dorsal pedal on top, um, or you can use the tail. And we're going to use Penny's front leg, her front left leg. Um, we also have already pre-shaved, so that is one of the common issues when you can't actually find the blood pressure. Um, you want to make sure that you have a nice, clean, shaved spot. Oftentimes you can get away with al just alcohol on the really shorter um, haired dogs, like whippets, things like that. Um, but if you're not able to find it, it may just be that you can't get through the hair. So make sure we have a nice, clean spot to put our crystal on. So we're going to fit Penny with a cuff. So for dogs, the cuff size should be about 40% of the circumference of her leg. So I know she's going to be between a 3 and a 4. I think a four is probably going to be more appropriate. See so if it goes about 40% around her whole leg. So positioning is one of those things as well that can also um, occlude your vessel and not have you be able to find it on a Doppler. So if I go too low, I'm going to actually cover up the space where I need to go or not give myself enough room to, find, to place the crystal to find it. So we're going to go up above where we need to place our crystal. Placing this actually can cause you to occlude it as well. So when you place the cuff, you don't want it so loose that it's gonna slide right off, but you don't want it so tight on her arm that it's occluding the vessel and you're not able to get a blood pressure. So it should just be nice and snug. She's got short little arms. So we're gonna replace this. Again, just nice and snug so it's not falling off, but not super, super tight. We will attach our spig. Okay, so we fitted Penny with her cuff. Um, so positioning is something that's also very important. The ideal position that you would want to do this in is lateral. Um, for smaller dogs, you can usually get them in lateral by yourself. Um, but for larger animals, um, you'll definitely want to use two people to kind of flip them on their side. That's just going to give us the best, most accurate reading. Um, we want that limb to be at the level of the heart. Um, but because Penny is a little nervous when she goes into lateral, we're just going to demonstrate this with her sitting. Um, I also am just be very aware of her. I know her and how comfortable she is with the handling. But if you have a dog that seems really nervous or you're not quite um, comfortable with having a second person, even if you're doing it in sitting or standing, is probably the safest thing to do. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, get this crystal with some ultrasound gel. So we use the indented part. So this side will not transmit. So if you are going through a rush or aren't paying real attention. I've definitely done this where I've gelled the wrong side and wondering why I can't get a reading. So just make sure we're using the indented side to get a reading. And then we're gonna be really liberal with this ultrasound gel. If you don't have enough gel on, it will not transmit the sound appropriately or really, really quiet. So you really wanna put a nice big glob on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up Penny's arm. Place the crystal on there. Turn the machine on, then I'll turn up the volume. And that's the sound we're looking to hear. So as I'm holding her, um, I'm putting very little pressure on her arm. If I actually press really hard, the sound goes away. So this is actually a really common mistake um, that a lot of people as they're first starting to use a Doppler make is you think that the harder you squeeze, you're gonna get closer to that vessel and be able to hear it louder. But actually, if you, get, if you squeeze, you're gonna occlude your vessel and not be able to hear it. So if you think you're in the right place, just loosen up a little bit and you might actually be able to, to find that sound again. Good job, Penny. Some other common issues that we have are blood pressures are really, really high or really, really low. Now, that may be a true diagnostic number that you're getting, but they can also be very much affected by the techniques that we're using. So if you're having a blood pressure that's much higher and seems very abnormal, um, you can troubleshoot some of the things that you're doing. 
The first one is cuff size. So cuff size, if your cuff is too large for the animal, you'll get a blood pressure that's too low. But if it's too small, you'll actually get a falsely elevated blood pressure. So we want to make sure that we're choosing the correct cuff size. The cuff size needs to be for dogs 40% of the circumference of the limb that you're using and for cats 30%. And that's really easy to measure. So you'll just take the limb that you're using and we're just going to place it vertically on her arm and wrap it around. So ideally you want it to be almost 40 to 50% around, right? And that's going to be the perfect size for her. A three would be too small. It doesn't quite go all the way around, so this would be an inappropriate size for her, and this would actually give me a falsely elevated reading. So if I took her blood pressure and got a really high reading, and I thought, hey, that's probably abnormal, I just wanna double check it, I can try a larger cuff, and if the larger cuff is still giving me a high blood pressure, then that means that's probably true for this dog. Another thing that can give you a falsely elevated pressure is again, her posture and how we have her. So sitting um, and standing, Actually, some studies have shown that can give you up to a 25 point difference in your blood pressure. So that can actually cause a false hypertension in your patients. So ideally, lateral is the best. If you are taking it and sitting or standing, notate that in the chart. And that way we know um, it may be a little slightly higher than it actually is, but that we can also be consistent with those readings. You'll see this a lot in our tall, tall patients or so Great Danes or Irish Wolfhounds. Um, it takes so much to pump that blood down to those limbs, and they really are reluctant to lay down in lateral. So if you're taking a great Dane blood pressure in standing, it's probably going to be a little higher than what it actually is. Um, so just notate that. It happens a lot with our shorter, squattier kids as well. So our Frenchies, our Basset Hounds, ones that just don't, our Dachshunds don't have a lot of real estate to work with. Um, another issue that we commonly have is if the blood pressure is too quiet or is going way too quickly and we're not able to get an accurate reading. And that can be a couple of things that are happening. There may be a hole in the cuff or actually in the line of the spig. So to test that, um, their little lever that you use to read your blood pressure, if you squeeze it and it doesn't maintain and drops down really quickly, there's something wrong here. Um, so you can switch out your cuff, try again. If you're still having an issue, switch out your spig and try again. Um, but if it's not maintaining a pressure and that line is going down without you even squeezing to release it, there's something wrong with your equipment and you're not going to get an accurate blood pressure. Another is if it's really quiet. So that could also be an issue with some of the Doppler machines. Um, if they're old, if they're not taken care of properly, you'll start to get a decreased signal. If you don't have enough ultrasound gel on your crystal, that will also diminish the sound so it might be too quiet for you to hear. Another is if you just got a lot of noise going around. So sometimes if the blood pressures are low or weak to start out with, you're not gonna have a really good chance to hear it. So try to minimize the outside noise as much as you can, but in a busy hospital or an ER, that's easier said than done. So you have two options. Um, these do come with headphones. So there is a headphone jack that you can plug in. Um, and that way uh, you'll just plug it in, you'll put your headphones on and take your blood pressure as normal and you'll be able to pick up on the sound a lot easier. You can also get around this if you don't have headphones, you can use your uh, stethoscope. So you would just put the earpiece of your stethoscope right on that speaker. Um, do be careful to start this with the volume all the way down or you will blow out your eardrums. Um, but you can actually take the blood pressure with the stethoscope on the speaker and be able to pick up on a quieter noise a lot better. Another tip to help if you can't hear the pressure or having a difficulty finding the pressure, especially on um, dogs or cats that have um, very compromised systems, if they come in shocky, their pulses are already weak, we may not be able to palpate those pulses as easy as we'd like to to help us find them. One trick is to use alcohol. So you're going to shave the area um, like we saw on Penny's foot and you're actually going to apply a little bit of alcohol directly to the skin. And that's just going to help um, locate that vessel a little bit easier. You never ever want to apply the alcohol directly to the crystal. It will actually cause damage to the crystal. So the alcohol goes onto the patient's skin, ultrasound gel and a large amount goes onto the crystal and then hopefully that'll help you locate that vessel a little bit easier. So as we've gone over, there are quite a lot of things that can cause you some difficulties trying to use these Doppler machines. Um, so really it's just about troubleshooting and looking at your patient and looking at your equipment and just picking out piece by piece, going through is it your equipment that's malfunctioning is it your positioning on the dog? Are you occluding it? Are you using the right size cuff? 
or is the animal just in a state where you're not going to be able to get a blood pressure? So sometimes it's not your technique, it's not your equipment, it's actually the dog or cat just not perfusing properly. So dogs that are in shock, um, dogs that have, caught, have massive trauma and a lot of blood loss, dehydration, hypothermia, all of these can play a role too. So if you are absolutely unable to get a reading using all the tips we've talked about, trying different limbs, it may actually just be your patient. And that's when we need to start talking to our doctor about fluid therapy, getting them back to a normal temp, alleviating some of those physical issues that are causing us to have some difficulty. But again, so much can go wrong when using these, but it is a really important tool to help assess our patients. And it's just trial and error. It seems like something that's really easy to do, but actually causes a lot of technicians and people that are new to the field a lot of frustration. It's practice, 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 and then you'll eventually get to a technique and be able to troubleshoot this a lot easier. So hopefully these techniques and tips help you to be, get more comfortable using the Doppler and get more accurate readings. Um, so thank you from Penny and myself.